Welcome back to the Caps on Sports Podcast. My name is Tyler Blumenstick, joined by today, just Sam Meehan and Andrew Felice. We're back for week 12. Um, I'll go through a little quick rundown of what happened in week 11. Uh, Nick and I both finished four and one. Uh, we capped off Sunday with the Cincinnati Bengals uh, minus one beating the Raiders in Las Vegas. Sam went two and three. Mano, uh, he covered this. I didn't update it. He went three and two. Um, and Andy was not with us last week, but he is this week. So what yes, is going sir. on? Yes, sir. We're good. Should we just go right into it? <sighs> just. Yeah, just get into it. It's been a rough season. You know, I think I've gone two and three, seven times at 11 weeks so far, but late season push toward the playoffs. How about it? Yeah, I'm going to need the same thing every week, but <laughs> eventually I'm going to have another winning week. Yeah, Look, that's how I feel, honestly. And I got four and one last week. So law of averages states I'm coming right back to the norm this week. So <laughs> here's what it is. All right, since Sam so kindly started mentioning uh, how the season is going, I guess I'll go through the records. I'm 23-31-1, and 43%. Nick is 28-26-1, and one. that is uh, 52%. Sam is 22-33-0, and zero. that's 40%. Mano is in the lead, barely, above Nick at 28-24-2. and two. So, <clears throat> not great. Mano's the only one that I think would actually be making money if he's bet every single pick and only those picks. He'd be a little bit above even because fifty-two and a half percent is breaking even. But I don't know. Quick math. Quick math. Yes, quick math. All right, let's break into this. We got Thanksgiving this week. I forgot to mention that in my entire intro. Um, we got three games on Thursday: twelve thirty, four thirty, and eight twenty. Sunday we have a smaller slate. It's got all one o'clock games except for three four o'clock games. There are what ten games on Sunday. Oh, 11, including Sunday night and then Monday night football also. Um, so we're going to kick off with probably one of the ugliest games of the entire week is the <laughs> Chicago Bears visiting the Detroit Lions. We got the Lions plus three and a half, the total set at 42. Uh, three picks on this one. Nick, who's not with us, is on the under, but Sam also is, so he can speak on that. And we also have Andy on Detroit, who wants to take the reins. I'll take that I, deep I guess I'll start off. To um, take this. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, you know, going to be waking up Thursday morning, you know, pretty hungover after, you know, go, going to the bars in the hometown on Wednesday night, as is tradition. And then you wake up, you know, get some, maybe get a little food in you before it's this 1230 masterpiece that's the Bears Lions. And, you know, it's obviously it's a it's a short week, but an even shorter week. Like, gotta it's three days of rest, and you still gotta get up early for the game. It's gonna be neither team can really score that much anyway. You know, we got Andy Dalton versus. It looks like Jared Goff will be playing. That doesn't do much for me. Uh, the Detroit defense actually looks pretty solid from time to time, and this game just screams you know ugly turnovers. You know, this is Big Ten football right here, so it's gonna be an ugly game which I think could lean into uh, a Detroit cover, ideally, so. Well, that's a good parlay into Andy's pick. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. I agree. Yeah. There was a report that came out that six starters didn't practice today for the Bears. They're calling for Nagy's head. They even talked about how at Nagy's son's high school football game that the student section was chanting fire to just get him out of there. So they don't know what's happening. <laughs> I The Lions are better than having no wins. They should at least have two. It's terrible. It's really just terrible. But let's go Lions. Get the first win while I'm eating way too much turkey and ham. Let's do that. And the Lions, like, they are – I think they're 6-4 and four against the spread this season. You know, one of the better, you know, covering teams in the NFL. But, you know – Oh, nine and one. That's all that matters. So it's going to be a, going to be some ugliness. Yeah, they don't like covering when I uh, when I put my money on them, especially when they play Philadelphia, and then I go on a complete high rate <laughs> that they're going to win the game and then they lose. Oh, they, lo they yeah. lose by a thousand. <laughs> yeah, it was like thirty to three or something like that. All righty, um, let's move on to the four thirty game. We got the Las Vegas Raiders visiting the Dallas Cowboys. We got the Cowboys minus seven fifty and a half on the total. No picks on this game. Uh, 
There are some uncertainties with the Dallas Cowboys. Amari Cooper may not be back in time for Thursday. C.D. Lamb just got hurt in uh, yesterday's game. No, today's Tuesday, so as far as Monday Night Football is concerned, uh, we don't know if he'll be back on Thursday. Um, Raiders are also in shambles. There's a lot of uncertainty. Um, I mean, things are more certain now, but there was a lot of uncertainty. Had a lot of issues this year, just whether it's John Gruden, Henry Ruggs, Damon Arnett, anything going on in Las Vegas. There are no picks. You guys got anything to add to this? I don't know. I mean, like, definitely with on the Cowboys side, with them missing, uh, they're almost certainly going to be missing Cooper and and Lamb. And the way they got shredded on, on offensive line by Kansas City, uh, Vegas also has a strong front four. So, you know, it might be another low-scoring ugly game. I would lean under 50, 50 and a half here. If anything, but it's just a steer clear game because, you know, despite that, you know, I could see Dallas still, you know, scoring because uh, Kellen Moore is a great play caller. He'll figure something out without their stars in the game. Yeah, stay That's away from it. Cents. The Raiders are absolutely freezing cold, but I don't know. The Cowboys are the Cowboys at the end of the day. They're either going to play like they're a Super Bowl team or they're going to play like they've never played football before. And I just don't want any part of that. <laughs> I'm going to bet it come Thursday. You know, it'll be like three o'clock. I'll be with my cousins, all that. Like, oh, why not? I'll throw 20 bucks on the under or something. But definitely uh, not for, for this, for this, for our five picks a week. Definitely not even going close to this. Yeah. Can't do that. Alrighty, Last Turkey Day game. We got 8.20 p.m. We got the Buffalo Bills visiting the New Orleans Saints. We got the Saints plus four and a half at home. Uh, 46 and a half on the total. We got two picks on this. Nick's not here. He's on Buffalo. Andy's on Buffalo. He's here. Tell us about Buffalo. What's going on? Buffalo's do. They have not looked great. They've lost some pretty tough games against teams that they should have beaten. I kind of feel like they're falling into the realm of the Chiefs a little bit, where it was, it was only a matter of time until they snap out of it. And why not do that on the big stage on Thanksgiving? that's have Josh Allen throw for 400 yards, let them tear them apart. And they're, they need to win. They're losing that division if they keep playing the way that they do it. And I think they're, it's time for them to step up It's step up now, or it's going to be another wash of a season for Buffalo. I'm just kind of banking on them playing angry and they're going to go out there and get the job done and for sure cover the spread for this one. So you're throwing a, you're throwing a lock on this one. For sure. I'm I'm probably going to throw a lock on this one. I really just can't see them playing as bad as they have been recently. There's no reason for it. It's not like there there's a ton of injuries. It's not like there's anything going on in the clubhouse that's screwing them over. They're just not playing good football, and it's only a matter of time until that breaks and they start playing the way that they know how to play. Yeah, I totally agree. And when – I mean, it was the beginning of the year. The Buffalo Bills were just scoring, and they were winning – and they were like they were undefeated for what, how many weeks in a row? Five, six? Yeah, yeah. After, after losing to Pittsburgh week one, they won like four or five in a row. That's what I meant. Yeah. Um, but we didn't know what Mac Jones was at that point. So the Patriots were just kind of not really in the conversation. But now that they're turning it around, I feel like it's putting a little bit of pressure on Buffalo. It's now more of a two-horse race instead of just the Bills running away with this division. Because, I mean, let's face it, the Jets and the Dolphins don't even stand a chance at this point. But, yeah, look, I, I kind of tend to agree with you there with Buffalo. I feel like maybe the only possible reason is the fact that Josh Allen isn't who we think he is, but I think he's closer to the MVP candidate than he is to the bust that everybody was talking about straight out of college. So, Absolutely. And who knows what's going on with the Saints' backfield right now. Kamara isn't practicing again. Who knows when he's going to come back now? Mark Ingram didn't practice today. And I just, and Trevor Simeon is not doing anything. Let's be honest here. So I just, I can't imagine that they're not going to cover this game. Yeah. Alrighty. I guess we'll see. Um, let's move on to Sunday though. Thanksgiving is over one o'clock game on Sunday. we got the Atlanta Falcons and the Jacksonville Jaguars. we got the Jags plus one at home, 47 and a half. Um, Two picks on this opposing sides. Andy, you're getting all your picks out of the way early. You're on Jacksonville. Mano, who's not with us today, is on Atlanta for – hold on. I need to check this. How many weeks in a row? Ooh, two weeks in a row for sure. Three weeks in a row. 
Three weeks in a row for Mano on Atlanta. Um, interesting. They're going to have to cover sooner or later, but unfortunately it's not going to come on Sunday. So they're, that's just unfortunate for the kid. I mean, he also had him a week. So it's four, four or five weeks. Are you going yeah. back further? Oh, yeah. he's He's been on Atlanta for four the past five weeks. And the one Are week they? he did not have him was week nine, when I had them and they covered against New Orleans. What are they against the spread this year? Because, I mean, Mano's uh, winning. Um, so, it's like we, we can't really shit on the Atlanta picks too much because he's in first place. So, so let's find out. Oh, he's no, we can, to we the all, ESPN the app. They are – drum roll, please. They're four and six against the spread. Okay. Like four and six overall, four and six against the spread. I mean, that's that's not bad. Well, I mean, week nine, you won. Week yeah. 10, he lost. Week 11, he lost. Week 12, I feel like he's got the best chance to cover out of any other week. Mm-hmm. Um, he lost but, week eight as well, if you were wondering. No, I didn't even go back that far. On Atlanta. <laughs> All right. Let's not waste any more time wondering how many times Mano's picked Atlanta. Andy, tell us why we shouldn't pick Atlanta this week. I do not know. And that's <laughs> just going to be the God's honest truth. I love that. <laughs> I just I saw don't your know. pick before, I'm, and I was like, Andy's going to spew some garbage about the Jags, and he's going to have no reason for it, and yeah, I'm dude. okay with it because – I just I just don't know. I bet on them once this year, and they covered for me, so I'm sticking with it. Um, if they play the way that they did against the Colts, I don't think that there's any reason for them to lose this game. Mm-hmm. Their defense has kind of woken up a little bit the last two of the three weeks, obviously not against San Fran, but if they can – do anything on defense that they did against the Colts. They held them to like 42 yards the second half of the game. If they could do that without Ridley, without Cordell Patterson and slow down pits a little bit and get a rush on the quarterback, you got to imagine that Trevor Lawrence can do anything. Just do something. Hand the ball off to James Robinson 500 times if you need to do it. (laughs) I just think that they've been playing a little bit better. Mine is getting steamrolled last week, but that's just how that's just how it goes when you're a Jaguars fan. But there's not really a real reason behind it, just that I really want them to. And that that's coming from the heart. That's a true fan speaking. Yeah, Atlanta just at times looks like they just found like five random fat guys from the crowd to put on their offensive line, the way they block at times. And the Jags you know, their front seven looks pretty soft time and time. You know, they got some they got some talent up there. So you Josh know, Allen's I'm, playing like a Pro Bowl edge rusher right now. If thought, he you're, some thought, you're crazy, there, man, but, thought you were crazy at first, but I think I'm with you on this one now, actually, with Jacksonville. <laughs> I, I, I'm on your You've side definitely here. done a little bit of convincing on my part too. That, so. Definitely. Bravo for you. Um my yeah, boys, come on now. It is what it is. We'll <laughs> see. Um all right, Mano's not here to state his case for the umpteenth week in a row, so we're going to move on. <laughs> um, Carolina Panthers visiting the Miami Dolphins. we got to pick them here. Um, the total's at 43. got three picks on this. My first pick of the day, Sam and Mano, we're all in agreement here. We're all on Carolina. Um, I'll kick it off. I watched the Miami Dolphins play the Jets last week. Well, not even last week, two days ago, less than 48 hours ago, and it was not good. I mean, to, uh, he, 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 look like, he looks like when there's urgency and when he needs to go do something and there's a clear goal in mind, like I think it was 14-14 in the fourth quarter and they had to go down and get a touchdown. And he was like, all right, you know what? I got this. I'm going to push the ball. We're going to go get a touchdown. And that's that. He did it. He put him up 21-14. But like he didn't look good. He didn't look comfortable. And I just feel like when you go up against the Carolina Panthers team that has a really good rush, um their defense is pretty solid their offense is now figuring it out cam newton's back apparently um i feel like that little spark coupled with mccaffrey coming back they're just a much better team than miami and at a pick them i'll take it so sam you're the only one else here to uh state the case we got yeah no i'm i'm totally with you this the panthers defense is you know it's it's very very good you know i think their second total defense nfl behind the bills um they're up there in scoring defense as well. They're like fifth or something. Very good against the run. Very good against gets a pass. They're just their defense doesn't have any flaws. And against a rather not good Miami offense, you know it's like Tua like looked 
pretty solid against the Jets, can't lie. But it's the Jets who have allowed about estimated, I'm going to guess, about 600 points a game past like five, six weeks, which, according to my calculations, not very good. So, yeah, real defense. They're going to probably turn them over a couple times. And, you know, Cam Newton and McCaffrey got the mojo going again. They probably should have won that game last week against Washington, but they did not, however, but watched it again. Uh, a lot better than Miami. So yeah, get, I think this is a not an easy pick, but one of the easier ones in the, on this week. I'm with you. Andy, you got anything to add before we move on? No, I honestly just believe in Cam Newton. They're just the better football team. Mm-hmm. Tua stinks. McCaffrey's back. Panthers are back. Keep pounding. All right. Let's move on to the New York Jets versus the Houston Texans. It's in Houston. Houston minus three, 44 on the total. Yeah. Nick's the only one with a pick here. He's on Houston. I mean, fine. I can't really argue that. I gave him a lot of crap for picking Houston last week, and they won outright. Um, <laughs> so, Like very convincingly, to too. Yeah. I mean, it's the right move here. I feel like the Jets are just really bad. Mm-hmm. But, like, they can also cover this. So, I, I don't know. You know, if Nick I, was here, he would have his sunglasses on with the microphone way too close to his face, and he would just be talking Thai God season. Oh, I, 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 I can do that. God. I can do that for him. You know, my, my boy Tyrod going to get it done, which, I mean, yeah, you look, I, I don't know. <laughs> I thought we were going to get a Nick impersonation there. I thought so, too, but I think I need like seven more drinks for that. <laughs> That's fair. All right. Do you want to harp on this? I don't think so. Yeah, no. All right, I'm shocked I'm the only one with a pick on the next game. And I think it's the first time that we're doing this. I don't know if it's against the moral code of the podcast, but I'm doing it. We got the Philadelphia Eagles visiting the New York Giants. We got Philly minus three and a half, 46 and a half on the total. Um, I'm taking Philly. I'm sorry. Maybe if the Giants played on Sunday instead of yesterday. Do not apologize. No, I'm not really apologizing for the pick. I really like the pick, actually. I feel like if I had to rank it, this might be my number one pick of the week. Um but, yeah, no, like I was saying, if the Giants played on Sunday instead of last night, maybe I wouldn't have this spillover angle or anger moving into this pick here. But it's here, and it's it's in full force. And the Philadelphia Eagles are a much better football team than the New York Giants, solely on the fact that they move the ball when they're on offense, and the New York Giants do not. <laughs> it's three and a half points here. The hook is a little annoying, which leads me to believe that this game is going to probably be closer than I think. Um, I'm going to err on the side of – Trusting my eyeballs and everything I've seen with the New York Giants this year, uh, they're going to lose. So hopefully by more than three and a half points if they're going to lose. And I get a cover here and a nice little one in the wing column. But, yeah, that's that. Yeah, like I know Jason Garrett is out of here, which, you know, God bless. But it's now Freddie Kitchens calling plays, which that didn't work out too well in Cleveland before. So it's like not much better. So, yeah, it's still going to be an ugly week. And, and Philly's grooving. I mean, what are they, five and six now? Five and five, whatever they – and they're five and six. I don't, think about, I don't do not believe they've had a bye yet. And they have a very easy schedule going in. You know, Philly could very well make the playoffs this season, which makes me sad. Yeah, it's definitely possible. All righty. Uh, let's move on. we got the Pittsburgh Steelers visiting the Cincinnati Bengals. Another divisional game here. In the AFC North, uh, we got the Bengals minus four and a half, 45 on the total. Two picks here. I'm on Pittsburgh. Andy's on Pittsburgh. I just talked a lot about Philly, so I will defer to you for this. Yeah, believe it or not, Big Ben looked like a quarterback again last week. In the game he got that angry. He got had mad. no business being in for it. I think the Steelers' defense should be coming back after four people, I believe, three or four people were on the COVID list. And if they can put up 37 points against the Chargers, there's no reason why they can't do it against Cincinnati. If you can fluster Joe Burrow a little bit, stop the run game by any means at all, or just play the same exact game that you did against the Chargers, which might be complicated to do when Ben Roethlisberger is playing back there, but he gives them a better chance to win. Mm -hmm. He makes plays for them still, regardless if you want to believe it or not. He's going to be playing probably another year after this and he's going to get carted off of this football field. I just think that the rival, the rivalry, they're a pride team. They take, they care a lot about 
the Pittsburgh Nation, the terrible towels, whatever the hell they're called. I personally think that the Steelers are America's team outside of the Cowboys. They're going to travel to that game if it is away. I'm not looking at it right now. Is uh, it yeah, away? It's, it's, it's uh, in Cincinnati. Yeah. yeah, I think it's going to be more green, more gold and black than it is going to be orange and black in that stadium. And I think that they're going to be able to cover it for them. I totally agree. Um, I just feel like the Steelers, even though they lost last week, they're going to parlay that energy that they had in the second half of that game and propel forward a little bit. I feel like Big Ben took that as like a springboard. And next week, and even moving on, like once he gets on a roll, they're kind of a field team. Like they're quick. They don't run deep routes, quick outs to Deontay Johnson. I mean, home runs to Claypool maybe down the side once in a while, but they're just a very quick pop team. They're going to pop it to Najee. They're going to hand it off to Najee. I just feel like it's kind of like a groove feel for that offense, and they just put up 37, so we'll see what happens. Uh, the Bengals, on the other, other hand, they played the Raiders and looked a little bit shaky. They won the game, so it's kind of like a tale of two. They won by 20 and looked shaky. <laughs> I know, I know, but I don't think the Raiders are very good. I picked Cincinnati. They're not. It was very comfortable. But, like, I don't know. It's like since he looked average and won a game – looking average last week, in my opinion. Steelers did the opposite. They looked okay in the second half, and they ended up losing the game. Now I feel like you take the line into consideration here, four and a half. I don't know. I feel like it's a little too heavy on the Cincy side, so I'm willing to take Pittsburgh. I feel like they can win the game outright. Give me the points. Give me everything. But, yeah, that's it. Yeah, Big Ben, like he's an old he's an old man now. He's just saving all of his energy toward the playoff push. You know, he was just, you know, going like 30% power than the season prior to – the second half against LA and now it's like, all right, it's time. He's got to make sure he makes the playoffs first. Hey, we'll see. Yeah. A, lot of season, a lot of season left. All right. Next three games that we don't have any picks on. Uh, we're going to start with the Tampa Bay Bucks visiting the Indianapolis Colts. Great football game. We've got the Colts minus <laughs> or plus two and a half at home, 51 on the total. Yeah. No picks, but I feel like it's only because it's such the a good Colts game and you really can't figure it out. Like the Bucks have a good run defense. The Colts have a good run game. I mean, I would lean Bucks here only because I feel like Brady mm. through the air can beat the Colts' defense. But yeah, I mean, at the same time, I can see the Colts setting the tone at home and running it on the ground and just kind of literally keeping control of the pace of the game and not allowing Brady to take over. But then again, you look on the other side, it's Tom Brady. He doesn't let the other team take over the game. So I don't know. What do you guys got? Well, you mean you can't, Tom Brady can't take over the game if he's not in the field. So it all comes down to the Colts' running game. Like Jonathan Taylor is a legit MVP candidate right now. And if they can get him going and really milk that clock a little bit, they can barely win this game. But I think it comes down to that Tampa defense is going to cause one too many mistakes from Carson Wentz. And I think that's that's why I would lead Tampa as well. Yeah, that's a good move. Andy? I would probably lean Tampa on this. Really, the only reason why I'm not doing anything with it is because I don't like the line at two and a half. I think if it was – that's, like, way too close for comfort to be taking any side of it. I feel like if they were able to squeak out, like, five, five and a half, something like that, just considering the way that Tampa looked against the Giants, and I know that it's the Giants, so it's not necessarily the same thing. I just was very surprised to see the line that low. I get the Colts are hot as anything right now, and you can't necessarily stop Jonathan Taylor. It's just – it's way too – up in the air between both sides right now to want to do anything with it. Yeah, I'm with you. Alrighty. Uh, next game. No picks on this again. we got the Tennessee Titans visiting the New England Patriots. we got the Patriots minus five and a half, 44 and a half on the total. We almost had a pick on this game. I actually had the word under <laughs> written in that box. Um, I and, also almost had a pick in this game. Yeah, we were. I feel like we were mulling this game a lot before uh. the podcast started. <laughs> I... I don't remember the exact score. I think it was 28-17. I wrote in the little Google Docs boxes down here. And uh, I said New England 28, Tennessee 17. That would keep that game under. Um, that would be over. Oh, that would be over. Quick maths. Wow. <laughs> if, if Good thing I didn't take the under. <laughs> wow. I, I would have came on this podcast. I would have picked the under. I would have argued for the math. I'm an accountant. People tell me I'm supposed to be good at math. I like to think I am, but not in this case. So, uh, 
Yeah, I don't have a pick on this. I'm going to stop rambling with my incorrect mathematics. But has anybody else got <laughs> anything on this? I mean, I was between Tennessee and another pick that will be discussed a little later. I obviously opted for the later pick, but because Tennessee seems to, they like to really bring it against the best teams. Like even without Derrick Henry, they still beat at the Rams like pretty handily too. But you got the sandwich, like this, a six win streak sandwich between the loss of the Jets and the Texans. So the team doesn't, like, I'm not really sure who they are right now. So, and the Pats are hot. So steer clear. Andy? Anything. Pats are hot. I don't like the Titans. I've never liked the Titans. They found their defense for two games, and I just don't <laughs> know if that's going to come back. I don't know what that was all about, but I don't think it's for real. I just – I would take the Patriots. I'm just not going near this. Yeah, it would be Patriots, under, or bust for me, and that would be that. Uh, next game, Los Angeles Chargers visiting the Denver Broncos. we got the Broncos plus three. 47 and a half on the total. Um, again, no picks here. I mean, I would lean Chargers. I feel like the Broncos had a bye last week, so we haven't seen them out of sight, out of mind. Um, they should be out of mind anyways because they're not a good football team. Um, but then again, the Chargers really, really scared me um, in the second half, not even the second half, in the fourth quarter of that game. They should have won and covered against the Steelers. They should have won that game by 14 to 20 points, and they did not do it. They poorly mismanaged the end of that game, and it freaks me out for the future and putting my money on the Chargers because I don't know if I'm going to get that. Um, but, yeah, no, I'm staying away, but I would lean Chargers. Anything? Yeah, probably lean Chargers. But, yeah, their, their late game, like, clock management and play calling has been questionable at best in some of these, you know, closer games, so. It must just be a Charger thing because uh, what's-his-face did it? Anthony Lynn did the same thing. I think this is a curse. Whoever, whoever's coaching that team, it's just, hey, I don't know how to manage the clock. It happens. Yeah, I think the Giants got a little bit of that bug. Giants have a lot of bugs. Regardless, um, I digress. We got four games left. We're moving to the 425 part. We got the Los Angeles Rams visiting the Green Bay Packers. We got the Packers minus two, total at 50. Two picks on this. It's myself and Nick, who's not here to defend himself, which I like because we're on opposite sides. Um, <laughs> and Nick is insufferable to argue against. Um, <laughs> he tried to start with me in the middle of the day today about Daniel Jones. I was like, no, I need to do work. It's not I ignored happen. it. I just, yeah, I was trying to do work here at home and I just ignored it. <laughs> yeah. I did not have time for that. All right. Um, so I guess I'll argue my Packers side. Packers minus two. We're below the field goal. I feel like. The Rams also had a bye last week, and we don't know what we're going to get first game back. I mean, traditionally, you like to think they go in and they get better on their bye, but we've seen teams do both. Um, Green Bay just lost to Minnesota in a heartbreaker. It's on the road. They're coming back home. They're playing a good team. I feel like Aaron Rodgers is going to go into practice this week. He's going to prepare well. He's just going to, I feel like, very solidly – is that even a word? He's going to handily beat it is now. the Los Angeles Rams. So – I, I don't know. I don't think it's not a play against the Rams. I feel like the Rams are a very good team. It's going to be a very good game. Uh, but squeaking out the uh, two points here, I feel like the Minnesota Vikings or the role of the Minnesota Vikings this last week in week 11 is now going to transfer over to the Green Bay Packers at home. And it's going to be a very similar ending to that. So, Because um, next time here, I'll try to uh, – summarize what his points I think would be um, obviously coming off two weeks, two weeks to prepare for this game, you know, are we one of the biggest games of the season right now? Rams Packers to the top teams in the NFC. And, you know, the Packers coming off a very emotional loss last week against the Vikings, like put all that energy in and still come out, you know, as the losing team, takes a lot out of you. Where like normally like every time I would pick the other team, like I'd pick the Rams situation, but there's uh, that dude, Aaron Rodgers, as he said, you know, he, he's pretty good. He'll have that team ready to go. So, but um, yeah, I think that would, that would be Nick's logic. I would assume I'm kind of leaning toward the Rams as well. I think they are going to have a big bounce back week, but you know, I'm, I'm steering clear myself. So that's all I got. That's all I got. Andy, anything to add Packers Rams? 
I was leaning towards the Rams before this. I was in between this and, believe it or not, the Jaguars game. And, of course, I had to go <laughs> with the Jaguars just because I'm biased and it has to be like that sometimes. But I, I do like the Rams here. I would absolutely love to see Aaron Rodgers just pop off because that's just what he does when he's not happy. He plays like an absolute madman. And I just think the Rams – are kind of in the same boat as the Bills right now, where they have to win now, a couple ugly losses, time to like take that sour taste out of everybody's mouth and prove to them that they're a Super Bowl contender. And that's how they do it in this game. And that's by winning it. I'm with you already. Um, all right. This next game is going to be the first game that the three of us that are present here today for the Week 12 episode um, all have a pick on. So we're going to move on to the Minnesota – yeah, stretch out real good. Come on. Oh, yeah. Yep, there it is. It's 2v1 right now, so. Yeah, it is 2v1. Um, Minnesota Great Vikings ball. visiting the San Francisco 49ers. You got the 49ers minus 2.5, 48.5 on the total. Um, Sam is on San Fran. Andy and I are on Minnesota. You want to state your case, and then we'll ambush you? What do you think? Yeah, I guess so. I guess. You know, you're the host. You make the rules, so I'll do that. I mean, I don't know. Well, so uh, the Niners, um, they're getting healthy, and they're getting their groove going a little bit. And no, it was I know last week we were against the the Jags, but that's what you're supposed to do against bad teams. The week prior did the same thing to a very talented Rams team. You know, the way they're beginning, their run game is getting to where it was in 2019 when it went to Super Bowl, where they could just. You know, Jimmy G can throw the ball like seven times a game and they'll still win comfortably. They got Jeff Wilson back now. Elijah Mitchell's back there. Trey Sermon, all those guys. Now Kittle's back in the mix. Debo Samuel is one of the most electric football players in the NFL. Put, put him at wide receiver. Put him at running back. Can you put him at free safety probably? He'll do something good, you know. And then, oh, look who woke up. Brandon Ayuk last week. So I think it's this offense getting healthy and finding their groove at the right time. And their defense was supposed to be good all along. It's starting again to get healthy and dominate again. This San Fran team, I think, is really going to get – is just hitting their stride right now. I was huge on them in the season. I picked them to win the NFC West, which, I mean, unless they put on a big, big run right now and San Fran kind of falls – or not, not San Fran. Arizona falls off, and not going to do, but – I think this San Fran team is poised for a run at one of the three wild cards, definitely. And the Minnesota team, again, a big emotional win against the Green Bay Packers next last week. This is screams a Kirk Cousins letdown to me. So let's go Niners. Can I switch my case. pick? Can I switch my pick <laughs> to one of the two remaining games left? Not because you convinced me, but because I'm just staring at this. And then once you said Kirk Cousins let down. No, game, I convinced you. I convinced you. <laughs> You're the last word. Oh, like, don't convinced. bail out on me right now, man. You made him talk first, so it could be a little double. I'm, team, I'm with you. I'm with you. I'm not going anywhere. Go for it. I oh. think what the 49ers are doing or what the Giants want to be with Joe Judd saying that we're going to run laps when people mess up and we're going to bully people. And that's what the 49ers are trying to do. They're running the ball 40 times a game with a wide receiver that wants to be Cordell <laughs> Patterson. And I just don't think that that's going to play against the Vikings. They did it against the Rams. Yes. That team can score quick. They can air the ball out. They can, basically do whatever they want when they have the ball in their hands. But I think the way that Minnesota looked um, against the Green Bay, that they can also prove to air it out, depending on the way Kirk Cousins play. They can score quick. And that's kind of how the 49ers wins games, is that they hold on to the ball like they get against the Jaguars for the entire first quarter, and you can't do anything about it. But I don't think that that's going to be the same result with the Vikings. Their defense is starting to get healthy the same exact way that the 49ers defense is starting to get healthy. You have an amazing running back in Delvin Cook that you have to worry about. Justin Jefferson absolutely took the top off of the Packers last week. And if you cover him, then you got Thielen doing the same thing on the other side of him. I think it's very evenly matched depending on what Vikings show up. But I think that it was an emotional win last week, but I think that also kind of 
prove to themselves that it's there, it's always been there, and that they can come in and take care of business this week. It's a pretty good argument. I'm going to go a lot more, uh, it's very I'm going to go a lot argument. simpler here. You even had me in second guessing for a hot second, but <laughs> no, Arizona Cardinals can't do it. <laughs> visiting the San Francisco 49ers in what was not week 11, not week 10, not week nine, week eight. A wait, wait, this isn't even the correct game, or is it? What the Cardinals Niners game from a few weeks ago? Yeah, I think it was week eight. Yeah, it was like 10 7, something like that. 17 10. Same thing, or was it 31 17? Uh, the one I'm thinking of was definitely a very low scoring game, like a 17 10. So, well, this one was 31 17, and Colt McCoy oh. started that game for the Arizona Cardinals. Um, James Conner went for 96 on the ground on 21 touches, 77 yards through the air. He scored three touchdowns. That's James Conner was not good enough to play in Pittsburgh. I know he's good, but he wasn't good enough to play in Pittsburgh. So now he's in Arizona. He's good. He's having the best year of his career so far. However, you look at Minnesota, who's now playing that Niners team and they have a dual headed backfield of Dalvin cook and Alexander Madison and Alexander Madison is a carbon copy of Dalvin cook. If James Conner could do what he did and Colt McCoy could do what he did, I don't care what Kirk Cousins is going to do. We got Kirk Cousins, Dalvin Cook, Alexander Madison, Thielen, Jefferson. It's it, no, it's going to be, I feel like a mini blowout. And I'm ashamed to even take my, uh, my pick off the board before. To, to to see, off. Like just what, well, like what I've been seeing as San Fran is now like, past couple weeks they they found what they've been trying to find all season both offensively and defensively so i think like yes that, that's a very good point that like james connor was able to like run all over him i just don't see that same san fran team now that's that that's why i'm on san fran. yeah i mean we yeah i think that this this is gonna be one of the better games of the weekend i think you know um the 425 window is just that's unfair to put both those games on the same time I mean, lucky I got like three TVs in, in the living room. So, you know, got watching. How do you feel once. about the over under in this? I, I would. Uh, ooh, over? I would I think that's that's tough. I think if it's, if it's going to be over, it's like they crush 48. See, if, but, if, if, if it's over, if it's over, then I think it's it leans more toward a Minnesota win. But if it's under, it leans more towards San Fran because if San Fran has these you know these 18 play drives they've been doing the last three weeks it's or two weeks then it's not much time to score for the team but i i'd probably lean a little bit towards the over yeah bit. definitely agree. Uh, I, don't I don't know actually it's a tough that, one i feel like any total right at 46 47 48 is just impossible that's a very good rated total yeah, yeah i would say so I, I applaud the lads in vegas that are that are making the lines outstanding Alrighty. work we got two games left 8 20 p.m we got sunday night football the cleveland browns visiting the baltimore ravens you got baltimore minus four and a half 46 on the total sam's the only one with a pick here on baltimore i imagine uh you, you're waiting for lamar to come back and you're not betting on uh, tyler huntley well i think well lamar was on the sideline he was just it was it was a sickness i think he just I think he just had the fucking runs or something. Probably. The way I, he was walking in. Uh-huh. The way he walked in, it looked like he just had to shit. So I think just he had a stomach flu or something and just, you know, couldn't play. So I I fully expect him to be back. He should be. Um, Baker Mayfield's going to play again because he refuses to take time off be, despite him having an injury in every vital part of his body to be a quarterback. And it's – I think the, the Browns, they're – They've won some games, but like they they barely squeaked by the like the Lions last week in, in what was one of the ugliest games you could ever see. And the Ravens, I know they haven't looked great recently, but when it comes to these like top AFC teams, it's hit or miss every week. Where like, you know, oh, you think that, you know, the the Titans, oh, they're the best. They lose to the Texans. But then, you know, the think, oh, these guys suck, they blow someone out. It's it's so up and down. And the Browns, they are on the no bet list, which should mean I should just not touch this game at all. But I am very angry with Baker Mayfield right now. 
<laughs> he just his dog shit play recently, and now he's yelling at the fans and all that. It just the Browns are starting to become the Browns again a little bit in ways, and I just see Baltimore kind of exploiting this week this weekend, and Lamar Jackson having one of those you know those classic prime time show outs where he goes for like 400 all purpose yards and four touchdowns against a, a good Browns defense to get me wrong, but I don't see the Browns scoring 14 points right now, to be honest. Yeah. I'm with you. I mean, they only put up what 13 against, uh, what was it? Detroit? Yeah. It, yeah and it was, thir- it was 13, like, you know, in the second quarter too, I was, it was a 13, nothing. I'm like, Oh, I got this minus 10 and a half in the bag almost. And then they just decided that offense, is stupid and not score anymore. So um, the Browns right now, they got a lot of soul searching to do. So, and the Ravens are going to, I think, I think they're going to ball them out. Yeah, it's definitely possible. Andy, anything to add before we go on to Monday night? No, I don't. I was high on the Browns at the beginning of the year and I'm biting my tongue about it. So I would rather just keep my mouth shut when it comes to the Browns in this situation. I yeah, mean, I gotta... like, there was no, there was like no one higher in the Browns than Nick and I probably the beginning of the season. And both of us have just, I think, jumped ship. It's a sad reality. It's a really sad reality. I actually have a hundo bagger on the Browns plus 205 to win the North. I placed it preseason with like five other bets. So I don't know if that's going to work. It's still possible. Yeah, I didn't, but... I, I didn't eight oh, like no. parlay for division winners and uh, it's not looking too hot because I did have the Giants in there. So, yo oh, boy. And the Vikings, both of which aren't looking too hot. And the Niners. Possible. It's definitely possible, this though. This entire NFC is a shit show. <laughs> we got time. We got an extra week this week or this year. All right. <laughs> Monday right. Night Plenty, Plenty of time. Seattle Seahawks, Washington football team. We got Washington plus two and a half, 56 on the total. Sam and Nick are the only two on this one. They're on Washington. This is going to be the side that I was going to switch to when I wanted to take Minnesota off the board. I was going to put Washington on there. I actually really like it. I think it's really sneaky, um, but let us know why. The, the Seahawks stink. Yeah. The, the only reason that they're a favorite in this game is because they've been good in, in like the past like you know 10 years, and they still have the same quarterback from those seasons despite them. They're, they're not good. Their offensive line is terrible. Their defense can't stop a nosebleed, and Taylor Heineke is actually a pretty solid quarterback. Like they're, He was there. making some plays against Carolina – that you, you see and it's like, wow, this is just not like some like fluke backup story. This dude can play this dude can play quarterback and, and yeah. probably like he, he said like they always say whenever he, whenever they have one, any broadcaster always says how he idolized Brett Favre. That's why I play number four. He's got that Brett Favre little gunslinger in him that he's you know running around running around like a ma- like a madman. Oh let me like you know throw across my body make make these throws that you're not supposed to make but they work out. And scary Terry McLaurin catches everything in sight. And against this Seahawks defense, Antonio Gibson is going to be a big factor in this game too. I just don't see the Seahawks being able to stop the Washington offense, which is, wow, that's so, that's so weird to say that the Washington football team's offense is the issue coming into the Monday Night Football. But, you know, it's could be a lot of points because Seahawks, you know, I mean, Russ also has that, you know, Houdini ability where he can, you know, pull some out of his ass and, you know, score some points, but they haven't the last couple of weeks. I mean, <laughs> so yeah, I think Washington wins this game and they, they could win it. Maybe not like handily, but like I, I can see him win by a touchdown here at home. I'm with you for sure. Interesting. I'm not going near this game, but because with the hint of stick thrown in that he wants the Washington football team to win this game. I'm just going to have to, for the sake of the argument, go on the other side and say the Seahawks. <laughs> Russ hasn't lost three games in a row since 2009. This would be the third loss for him in a row since he's been back from injury. I think not that you can't take Russ lightly even though if he's playing good or bad, like you said, Sam, he can scramble around, throw the ball behind his back 50 yards and block it. <laughs> really? and somehow moss three people and end up in the end zone. Like any of that can happen anytime for us. And I just think he needs to sit in his locker, listen to some future really loud, get pissed off that he's raising his child and just okay. sling rock. Like he knows he can sling rock. 
I just – it's it's been so many years since he's lost three games in a row. Like, it can't happen. I refuse very, to believe that that's going to happen. I mean, then, yeah, then give me a, uh, a Seahawks game when you field goal down by one. As time expires, bang, cover two and a half. That's all I need. Touche. But, I'll tip, no, the, I'll yeah, tip like, the cap to that one. I, I, I do think this is the weakest Seattle team since that 09 season. So, but yeah, again, like Russ pulling up some bullshit is what really scares me the most. It's we'll definitely possible. That. It's always in. It's always in the. Oh, it's very, very possible. <laughs> All right. Any closing thoughts? That wraps up the entire slate. Um, fire Gettleman next. Um, well, I think it really it starts John Merrick as a team, but that's that's a whole other conversation. So yeah, it's a lot of steps to take, and I don't know if they're ready. <laughs> I'll throw Alrighty. five bucks for the team. You guys want to sure. throw fives for the Giants? Let's see what do I got here. Hold on, I have a stack of coins. Let's uh. I got, I got some cents, best cash in my wallet. 50, 75 cents, a dollar. We got a dollar 25, a dollar 30, dollar 40, a dollar 43 for the New York football giants. Take it or leave it. <laughs> it's all the worth right now, probably. All righty. Dog shit franchise. Um, yeah, what Sam said. Um, so this has been week 12 of the Caps on Sports podcast. Um you can check us out on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok at Caps on Sports. Check out our website at CapsOnSports.com. Um, pretty much it. Yeah, um, college basketball is well underway if you're a fan of that. Um, I've been posting model predictions across the entire slate every single day um, in blog form. And they keep winning. Form. Yeah, they're winning somehow. Um, I'm actually going to go update this right after this. Um, but, yeah, for myself, Sam Meehan, and Andrew Felice, this has been the Week 12 episode of the Caps on Sports podcast. And we'll see you next week.